Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. As you can see, I'm not in my home theater, but I'm in my new friend Randy's home theater. We're doing the Florida home theater tour, so I'm traveling all over the state of Florida, just capturing some really great stories and some really great home theaters. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at a multi-purpose home theater. It's a pretty large space, but we've also got some great areas for entertaining guests. And so I'm really excited to be just hanging out with Randy and sharing this home theater with you guys. Now, before we jump into the video and give you the tour, I wanna give a big thanks to today's sponsor, Elite Screens. Elite Screen carries a huge selection of ultra short throw solutions in fixed and electrics in addition to award-winning products and a new golf impact line. Have an ultra short throw projector? Pick up their new electronic floor rising CLR screen or go with an electric retractable drop down CLR screen. Want to have your speakers out of sight? Take a look at their new acoustically transparent ambient light rejecting Aon Cinegray 4D AT edge free fixed frame or their acoustically transparent Aon Cinewhite A8K screen. For all your projection screen needs, visit EliteScreens.com. I'll have links down in the description below. So Randy, thanks so much for inviting me into your incredible home theater. I think this is gonna be a fun tour for you guys. And so Randy, let's just head upstairs and let's walk these guys through your incredible setup. We'll go through this uh, multi-purpose area out here where you entertain guests. And then of course, in the video, we'll be talking about all your equipment, theater seats, projection and all of that. So let's head upstairs and check it out. Awesome, let's do it. So as we come down the stairs, you're basically entering my man cave, my, my happy place. This is a, sort of a multi-purpose space, really heavily family oriented, but also sort of a comfortable place for my buddies to come and hang out and watch sports and play pool and just have a good time. Our social life revolves around sports, Michael. Yes. We're, we're big Florida State University fans being here in Tallahassee. We spent a lot of time in and around the university and at sporting events. So this was this was a neat gift my wife put together for me. So cool. Using, um, it's actually called Mix Tiles. Sent a bunch of pictures in to, uh, to a site and they posted on this foam core and we sort of set it up in this design. But this captures, you know, this is 15 years yeah. of our life just in and around Florida State sports and so many just really meaningful family moments taking place and it was neat that she was able to sort of capture it like this. Certainly, and are these just like double-sided uh, sticky tape? It's or just we... foam core sticky tape, yeah. Okay. You just stick it on the wall, it's super easy and it's really inexpensive. Nice. It, was a, it was really a neat, sort of a neat addition to the room. Very cool to be able to just, because as soon as I walk in, I know exactly what you're about, man. Yeah. You're about family, you're about relationships, and of course, you're about sports. We're gonna see yeah. a lot of that in your home theater tour. That is super, super cool. Is there any, maybe a, a particular favorite here? You know, if you ask my wife, she's going to, she's going to pick out this picture here. This yeah. is, uh, this is from uh, ESPN's uh, college game day and that's Kirk, Kirk Herb Street. So gotcha. her, her, uh, she's a big Herb Street fan. So that's, that's kind of a, the highlight for her. Very cool. I'm kind of fond of my daughter who's now 12 years oh, old, wow. but this is, she's at this point, like three or four months old being held by uh, Christian Ponder at the time who went on to play for the quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. She and wasn't too happy there though. She wasn't, but uh, but Christian was nice enough to, to hold her. Awesome. Lots of other, you know, sort of professional players in some of these pictures. Um, this is uh, Derwin James, uh, Lee Corso, uh, Cam Akers, uh, Devontae Freeman, just a lot of a lot of neat sort of sports figures who have come through the university. We've been able to sort of interact with, get to get to know and, and spend some time with. And of course, our most famous picture is my middle son, Blake, who's, uh, who's uh, 13 now. Right. Flashing the crowd of the That's stadium. Awesome. And, and, a, and this is a shot of the Jumbotron, him on the Jumbotron. So cool that you were able to capture that yeah. moment. So Randy, what do we have going on on this wall? Yeah, well, no surprise, more, more FSU gear, Michael. <laughs> so we start with a, a football signed by the 93 Heisman Trophy winner, Charlie Ward, cool. which was a big deal. This is FSU's first Heisman Trophy winner, so we're pretty excited about that. Nice. Uh, in the middle is a picture of Dalvin Cook and Jimbo Fisher when we won the Orange Bowl. Mm. Um, and to the left of that is a, is, a, is a football signed by Mickey Andrews, a former defensive coordinator um, for, for the Seminoles, who was kind enough to come over and dinner and spend time with our family, oh, he wow. and his wife at the time. And, and, a, and we just was kind enough to leave us the football. So it was a special, special experience. Very cool. So you actually had him over to your home. Yeah, yeah, it was neat. Man, and then we got another wall over here. Yeah, so this is a big deal, Michael. This is uh, FSU won the national championship in football in 2013. 
Uh, the picture on the left is uh, is a picture from the end zone. It's the winning touchdown. Dude, that's Calvin a Benjamin great caught. shot. Yeah, and it, uh, it it occurred with just a few seconds left in the game. So it was kind of a big deal. Oh, we, won, we won it at the very end of the game. The, the, the challenging part of it, Michael, was my wife's an Auburn grad, and that's who Florida State was playing at the time, so we had mixed emotions about sure. the victory. I was happier than she was. That's awesome. To the right of it is a picture of Jameis Winston, who uh, was throwing a, a pass from the end zone uh, at, at that year's, the 2013, actually 2012 Clemson game. Right. Uh, he went on to win the Heisman Trophy that year. Man, super great space. I love how as soon as you walk in, you know exactly what you and your family is about, yeah. and then let's just kind of check out the rest of it. Yeah. All right, now this is pretty unique here. I've seen a lot of video games, but yeah. there's got to be a story here. What well, a story. So, Mike, I was a gamer as a kid. Loved, loved the games, but the oh, games yeah. today are too complicated. Like, yeah. way too much going on. Too many buttons. Sure. I knew I wanted some sort of an arcade system nice. in my basement, but I, yeah. I just wasn't, I wasn't sure what I wanted. And I found a company in Orlando who was willing to build it for me and do custom graphics. No way. Yeah, so I called them. I said, would, would, could you do something that was Florida State themed? And they're like, well, we've never done anything like that. Too but cool. Do you have any pictures? So I sent them pictures and, they, and they're designers. I mean, obviously amazing. Yeah. Their graphic designers came, spit this out in like a day. And I said, do it, just do it. And the cool thing we I like about it is the deck on it here, the, the surface yeah. is actually a, an aerial shot of the football field. No way. Yeah, so that's legitimately a real real picture wow. of the field. It's so cool. So this is a place down in Orlando, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Well, give me their information. I'll post a link maybe down in the description if you guys are interested in something like that. Are they still in business? Yeah, absolutely. Check it out. That is phenomenal. 16,000 games on this thing. <laughs> every Old game, stuff, right? Every game yeah, that you retro. and I played as a kid yeah. is on here. Nice, man. Absolutely love it. Got some cool speakers here, too. Yeah, so. it's the thing's decked out. It's got LED backlighting. It's um, that it's cool. So and I'll tell you what, when the guys are over, we're playing pool. Yeah. You know, only a few people can play pool at a time. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we tee up some golden tea. Nice. There we'll you go. A little tournament. I love it, man. That's yeah. rad. It just gives a great yeah. vibe. And then, and then what? you know, listen, we'll get to the theater eventually, I know. Yeah. But, like, what theaters? You know, you can't have a theater without some sort of popcorn. So this was my gift to the family at Christmas time. Was cool. Insert the popcorn machine. And so my kids are down here, whether they're watching movies or not, they're popping popcorn all the time. Nice. Great addition to the theater room. But again, as this vibe yeah. of, we just want to create fellowship, we want yeah. to create a gathering and just some social aspect of it. And you've got a huge space to work with. So what's next? Maybe we talk about uh, our wine collection. Yeah, so Michael, one of our vices is wine. We we uh, we're members of a number of clubs in out in California, so we get shipments. It seems like on a weekly basis, like these. Yeah, yeah. This is only part of it. Uh, we're in the process of building out what's going to be a legitimate wine cellar, and I've got a. You'll see a door that's going to go into into the into place here soon on that. Cool. But this is sort of what we do when we're not watching movies or playing video games. Yeah. We just enjoy a sort of nice glass of wine over dinner. I love yeah, it, man. So, so, so this is just part of it. We're we're uh, we're big into this stuff. It's a lot of fun. I know nothing about wine, man. That is phenomenal, though. So controlled temperature. Yeah, controlled, yeah, all temperature and... control, multi zone. It's um, it's sort of the, the right way to preserve wine. Yeah. So what's the plans for? I know you're building a room. Yeah, we're gonna have th this is actually gonna be built into the wall. So we're gonna inset this into the wall, and when you open the door just to your left here, you're gonna have all the racking. So we're gonna have about 500 bottle storage. <laughs> 500 bottles, yeah. man. That's awesome. So you got like lots of passions, man. I love it. You got sports, you've got wine, and then we're heading into the theater room in just a moment. Yeah. So let's check out kind of this area right here where some more fellowship happens. All right, let's do it. So this is our pool table slash pub area. We've got the pool table set up. We put in a sort of a little kitchenette with a refrigerator and an ice maker and a, and a sort of a special sink. So my yeah. wife found this Jack Daniels barrel at a, at a craft expo. Right. Brought it home, we, we rolled it down to the basement. I've looked at the thing for about 16 months probably. I mean, what am I gonna do with this thing? And I saw a picture on the internet, someone had made a sink out of it. So cool. And I thought, wow, that's super neat. Could I do something like that? So I started you know, Googling, how would you do something like that? And one thing led to another, found a cabinet maker when I was designing sort of what I wanted the little kitchenette to look like yeah. and said, hey, would you be willing to work with me on this? And they said, yeah. And so we, we built this thing, put a sort of hand hammered copper sink in, and you know it's flanked on each side with nice. um, you know sort of adult beverages when right. friends come over. Put the padlocks when the kids are down. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, teenagers. for sure. Dude, that is there's just so much character in your room already. I'm loving what I'm seeing. 
Yeah, a lot of fun. And then this door, oh I, I mentioned goodness. earlier, this is the door that's going to be uh, fronting the wine cellar. How old is this, you think? This thing's like 110 years old. Oh and we found goodness. it. It was a, just a weird whim, a fate kind of thing that we yeah. ended up running into it. And there was a woman who was clearing out her house, and she was a designer, and she had acquired it. She was going to build a wine cellar, and it didn't happen. And right. so it, uh, this door was meant to come to me. Wow. <laughs> it's a slow process. So eventually, at some point, that's, uh, you know, we're going to have glass inlaid on it and that'll be, uh, you know, we'll be finished back up and that'll, yeah. that's going to be the front of our wine cellar. Man, that is going to be just a beautiful centerpiece. Yeah, it's for super that. neat. That's going to be phenomenal. Of course, I guess you guys play a lot of pool here. This is where it gets serious, Michael. This is, <laughs> man, massive tournaments are played around this, this table. Nice. Around many, uh, many a, 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 a bitter match for me and the kids or my friends yeah. or... Or whatnot. It's um, it's always a lot of fun. And I love the lighting here. It's just yeah. got that vintage look. It's gonna tie in really great with this. Man, just super super cool space. Of course, up here we got more sports memorabilia over here. Yeah, you can't escape it. It's yeah. everywhere, Michael. Yeah, and I, I didn't watch a lot of sports growing up, and so I never really got into that. I always kind of had the nerdy hobbies, man, computer stuff. But but man, absolutely, this is just a beautiful beautiful space. Got this. Oh man, check that out. So what is this made of? It's, uh, it's tin. It's actually really? corrugated tin. And uh, I think another craft expo find that my wife that so ran cool. across. I thought it was kind of neat when I saw it. I said, well, we'll stick it over the sink. Love it, man. So much character, so much going on in this room. So just a beautiful open area that you can kind of have friends over. A bunch of people. Super Bowl Sunday. It's happening you gotta here. Got to be good. Yeah. You know? And then, of course while some of them are just hanging out here playing games and getting popcorn and, and playing pool, there's a lot going on in yeah, the theater Yeah, this is sort of my dream yeah, to, to so. actually be able to have a dedicated theater space, so I'm excited to show it to you. Well, let's go check out the theater room. Randy, this is a huge theater room. Kind of tell us what dimensions we're looking at. Yeah, Michael's about 26 feet deep, actually a little bit over 26 feet yeah. deep and about 19 feet wide. Okay, so one, and what are your ceilings? Uh, nine feet. So big area that you've got to work with. We're going to go through all the components, screens, speakers, and everything. But before I get into that, man, I'll be honest, I'm jealous. You live in Florida and you have a basement, man. That is really the first time I've seen somebody in Florida. That's a pretty unique opportunity. Yeah, I'll be honest, it was the first time I had seen a basement too. Yeah. And I was so excited when we looked at the house. I got down here, it's about 1,400 square feet in the oh basement. Oh my goodness. And you know, everything upstairs, the main level and the, and the second level was everything we were looking for from a living perspective. Sure. But it didn't have a sort of a dedicated space that I was gonna set up a theater. Yeah. And that was one of my requirements. And when I, and I walked down the stairs and I saw this, now it wouldn't look anything like oh this. We, we sort of gutted everything and redid it. But, I fell in love the minute I walked down here. And so this has been a process. Roughly, how long did it take? Kind we, of from we, when did you start on? We this, bought I the guess? home in 2016. Okay. Um, I started building this thing in 2017, and and I'll say about probably 90 percent of it was completed in 2017. Yeah. And my biggest issue was I got it operational. Right. And I started watching stuff. Yeah. I'd sit down here, and I, my motivation to actually you know continue building sure. and enhancing went away yeah. for a while. So I probably from 2017 till. Honestly, pr probably late 2020, okay. I didn't touch this thing. I just enjoyed it. Yeah, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, a lot of times we get in the habit of upgrading and upgrading, and I don't know we're going to sit down at the end of this. We're going to talk about some yeah. of your future plans and some things that you'd like to do as upgrades, but I think there's, there's value in sometimes just sitting down and enjoying what you have because there's always something bigger, something better to... To, to go after, but you've created an incredible yeah. space. So let's talk about that. What kind of screen you got here? This is a, an elite screen, Aeon model, uh, ambient light rejecting, okay. uh, 120 inches. Gotcha. And the main reason you chose ambient light rejection, you're thinking theater room, why would you need that? Yeah, well, you, obviously it's a mixed use space. That's and, right. And I'll tell you, 60% of the time we're watching movies is completely dark. Yeah. The other 40%, it's mayhem. Yeah. yeah. You know, either the kids are down here having a good time, or watching, you know, if my guys are over, we're watching sports, or we're playing pool, yeah. or they're playing video games. All that's happening while something's going on on TV. So I yeah. just had to deal with, as best I could, deal with you know sort of the light conditions. Yeah. So having the ambient light rejection, it kind of rejects some of the light that's coming from. You know, there's a door here. We've got you know kitchen lights over here, and then of course the room lights. Yeah. So that allows you to still maintain a pretty yeah. good picture. Yeah. To be able to view while the lights are all on, still get. And so what size are we looking at? Maybe. It's a, it's a it's a 120 inch 120 yeah. diagonal gotcha yeah. and that's a 16 by 9 yeah. again to me 
I chose the 2.35, the wider one, but I mostly just always watch movies. So in a combo kind of thing, yeah. when you do a lot of sports, those are always in 16 by nine. And so it makes total sense why you went with a 16 by nine. So we've got massive screen. What are you pairing this uh, like projection with it? Yeah, so we've got an Optoma uh, UHD 60 projector okay. that I bought in 2017. Yeah, so this is a little bit older projector. It is, yeah. It was one of the first projectors that started doing the uh, the uh, pixel shifting 4K okay. piece, so I was super yeah. excited to be able to get in that space, and the pricing at the time was pretty reasonable, so, yeah. so I doubled down. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, so we got the image here. So we've got some pretty beefy, now this is a massive center channel. Yeah. Talk us through your speaker setup and even like, uh, you know, is it a five point whatever or seven point whatever? Yeah. Kind of walk us through that as well. Okay. Well, it, it's, uh, you know, we did this in 2017. It's a 7.1 system. I've got visions to move into the Atmos to add some more channels, but we're not there yet. Okay. The front stage is all JBL at this point outside of the subs. Yeah. So this is pretty unique. I've, I've never seen this. So yeah, I, I just wanted to do something different. Um, at the time, I wasn't ready to do sort of the, the AT screen and everything gotcha. behind it. So I just like wanted an acoustic to do, transparent yeah, screen. exactly. So yeah. I just wanted to do something a little bit different. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I had visions of sort of being a, a woodworking craftsman right. or whatever. So I just sort of uh, cobbled this thing together. But, but behind it are JBL uh, Studio 590s yeah. on the left and the right. The center channel is studio, uh, JBL Studio 580. Gotcha, and you laid that horizontal. Yeah, yeah, so I, not, not ideal. Gotcha, because <laughs> that changes the dispersion pattern exactly. of the tweeter. Exactly, but it does a decent job. Yeah. And when we go with the acoustically transparent screen, I'll probably going to do a matching across the front. It'd be nice to have sort of the tweeters in alignment. With gotcha, so maybe put an acoustic transparent screen out in front of these, have three identical speakers, left, center, yeah. and right. I think that's a sweet, sweet plan. Of course, we've got some memorabilia here. Yeah, yeah, so yeah those are game-worn helmets. Nice. One of them in particular is uh, is pretty special. This, uh, this garnet and black one on the right is actually Dalvin Cook's helmet, so we're pretty excited to be able to get a hold of that. Gotcha. Dalvin Cook, just a, sort of another player in the NFL, is having a quite a quite a quite a career. Sure. So speaker-wise, so we've got three up front. What are you running for surrounds? And do we have Atmos? Yes, we don't we have Atmos oh. yet. So that's a, so another, those were in ceiling. These were in ceiling when we when we purchased. So I pulled them out, and they actually are access panels that I use for routing. It just makes gotcha. things a little bit easier. Um, surrounds are all Fluence. Okay. Um, AV fives, I think, uh, and then we've got bipole speakers on the on the on the sides and in the back, just bookshelf. Uh, fluences. Very cool. So I'm assuming I've heard of Fluence. I know um, Joe from Joe and Tell. He's done some reviews on those. Very affordable speakers. Very. Right? So I'll tell you, the entire back of this thing. Yeah. Less than two hundred dollars in speakers. Isn't I mean, crazy. It, it it and they and they do reasonably well. To be honest with you, hundred percent. I was pretty excited about it. Very cool. So and again, one thing that I love kind of featuring is you may have a massive room, you may have a little room, you may have a big budget or a little budget. But I really believe that just about everybody can have some type of home theater if it's in a spare bedroom, which I've got um, a gentleman. I just did a home theater tour for him. He has like a 12 foot by 13 foot bedroom and he's got an 18 inch subwoofer in the front and two 15s in the back. So I think it's just really cool seeing the different styles and size and what you've chosen to do in your room. So hopefully this provides some inspiration to you guys that are watching the video. So subwoofers, what do we got going on? Yeah, here? so uh, two front subwoofers are SVS uh, PB2000 Pros. Those okay. are actually new additions. Yeah. Um, largely, I think I'm going to blame. <laughs> my wife blames actually Michael and you and my buddy Jay yeah, for I sort of reigniting the, the interest in, in making upgrades. So before this, I just had one sub, yeah. uh, an older SVS PB2000. And now that's in the rear, uh, rear of the theater. So I've added these two within the last uh, 30 days. Nice. So you got two up front, and then there's one. There's in one the in the back. back. Right. I've got a, a pit, I call it, behind the riser that I built that uh, sort of helps with some of the resonance. So it's sort of stuck in the pit. Yeah, it almost kind of gives you that near field bass back there. Yeah. Not quite near field, but definitely yeah. you feel a lot of bass, and that probably has a lot to do even with your platform. So let's take a moment. Let's talk about the rear of your room. We'll talk about the seating as well as your riser and even some of your acoustic treatment. All right, well, maybe we start talking about the seating first, cool. Michael. So these are all HT Market uh, Southampton models. 
It's a company out of uh, out of Chicago. I was fortunate enough to be working in Chicago at the time, back when I was building this thing in 2017. Right. And so I called the guys up and they said, "Come on over to the showroom and check it out." So I got to sort of try out all the models in the showroom, and cool. They were super great to work with. And, and that's so. pretty rare because the hard part nowadays is we don't have a lot of stores that you can go and physically sit down. Yeah. And so you're having to rely on guys like me that have sat and we just share our experiences. So that was great that you were able to do that. Yeah, that was great. Been really, really happy with these. Uh, very reasonably priced, so uh, that was a great investment. They're all, uh, these four in front and four in back, four in back are sitting on a riser that okay. I built. Uh, this was definitely a handyman special <laughs> that I constructed using basically the blueprints and plans on AVS Forum on how to do it, which was pretty straightforward. Nice. Did yep. you insulate inside of it? I did, everything. Yeah, everything they told me to do, I did. I'm pretty good at following instructions. Yeah. So, and they laid it out to, you know, step by step which was great and then I put in some step lighting but I didn't want to have to turn it on and off uh, routinely so I put in a motion sensor so it's gotcha. on a low voltage system a 12 volt system just with LED track lighting okay and when it detects mo movement it turns it on for 60 seconds so when somebody gets up from the back it sees that yeah. and turns it on so they don't fall yeah Super cool. Yeah. Very cool. And then uh, and then I just put in, actually these these uh, acoustic panels were just done. These are DIY specials again, mm -hmm. super cheap, super affordable. Um, I did it for two reasons. One, obviously to improve sound sure. acoustics in the room, but yeah. these are actually windows. So mm, right next gotcha. to you, Michael, wow. is, a, is a big window and then there's a bay window behind the, the back row. I can see that now because that's got that little yeah. cut out shape. Yeah, and so this one's here for symmetry purposes only. Yeah. But, um, but so they serve multiple purposes and obviously they help with light management as well. Very cool. And you painted your ceiling black. And yeah, so the wife authorized here. it. This was you know, special. It was again, the, the, the man cave. So yeah. I got the okay to do that. And I was hesitant to do that in my room, but I'm so glad that I did and you know, I know it's hard to do it like in a living room setup, but in a dedicated space, if you can paint the ceiling, it really makes your room look a lot bigger. And that just kind of disappears when the lights go out, which that's super, super cool. All right, I know there's gotta be a story here, so what's going on with this? Yeah, so if you're familiar with Florida State University, the mascot, Chief Osceola, he rides in the stadium on, on, the, on, the, on Renegade, the horse. And he's always carrying a spear, and they yeah. light it up in the game, plant it in the ground. So this was another find my wife had at, awesome. a, at a charity auction she was at. She goes, she called me, says, "You wouldn't believe what I found. I'm bringing you home a surprise." And in awesome, came in came the spear. So I had to figure out where I was going to put it, and I thought uh, it's a good home for it in the theater. I love it, man. A lot of detail, a lot of craftsmanship in that. Yeah, it's super neat. I like it a lot. Definitely a very cool vibe. Again, just tying in that whole motif of sports and your favorite team. I love it. So Michael, this is uh, this is one of my problem areas. Okay. I sort of have a love hate relationship. This is a this is a double French door. <laughs> okay. So we got doors right and directly. Doors right here, you. all and they're all window panes in it. Mm -hmm. it. There's a ton of light, you know, light bleed through. Sure, and that's kind of right near your front. It is. So it creates some challenges. We put blackout curtains, and there's some additional things that we're looking to do to try to try to cut off that light to improve sure. contrast in the projector. Okay. But it's been a blessing too, honestly, is mm -hmm. when I when I'm bringing in big stuff like these chairs. Sure. I can't imagine how I would have carried these chairs down, down, down the stairs, Correct. down in the basement, and then when the when uh, like when the subs came in and the front stage came in, sort of big boxes. So sure. having a double door, yeah. like on ground level, that you yeah. can just sort of roll things in on a dolly has been super convenient. Or who knows when you're going to get that big 21 inch subwoofer? You're yeah, hey, <laughs> my wife might see this. Okay. <laughs> so, but definitely, it's nice to have that access, but yeah. it does create some light bleed in. And one thing that we talked about is I've used some. It's almost like a static clean kind of blackout material and literally you spray it on the glass, spray it on the fabric, you stick it onto yeah. uh, those panels. It's going to be more difficult because you get a bunch of little squares you'll have to cut out, but it would cut out a lot well, of that. The juice might be worth a squeeze. <laughs> yeah, it definitely would cut out a lot of that. So the darker the room you can get, the better image yeah. you're going to get on your projector and the more contrast that you'll get with that as well. So Michael, this is my rack. I'll, I'll be honest, uh, I have rack envy in comparison to many things I've seen on your channel. It's super simple, yeah. but it's uh, the main engine here is an Integra DTR 40.7. Okay. Um, uh, the front stage is powered by an Emotiva Base XA3, which yeah. I actually bought after watching one of your videos. Very cool. Last Great fall. little budget friendly amp, three S channel. It it is amazing, Michael, how it's changed the front stage. Awesome. And That's I and I ran off this Integra alone for you know five years, sure. and and then this thing has changed it's changed the game for me. I'm Very cool. really impressed. Good to hear. Uh, Samsung uh, UHD 
uh, DVD, Blu-ray player, mm -hmm. and then the majority of the of the content watches coming off of an NVIDIA Shield. Okay, perfect. So you do a lot of streaming and Lots Netflix of streaming, and yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. that stuff. Orbi router? Yeah, so, one. you know, it wasn't super easy to get wired network down here, so we've got a mesh network in the home, so this big white mm -hmm. orbit, Orbi thing here is, uh, is, yep. is providing connectivity to, to the rack. Very cool. I use the same thing in my setup. So Michael, this is where we hang out in between shots when we're playing pool. You know, you got a nice cold beverage, yeah. high top chair. We got a couple of neat little helmets here. So the small one is Derek Brooks, Hall of Famer from Florida State, linebacker. Helmet here is Cam Akers, uh, big time, Super yeah. Bowl champion, starting running back of the LA Rams. So again, more FSU stuff. All right, Randy, this has been absolutely fun. Hanging out in your home theater, it sounds incredible. I'd love to just kind of pick your brain for a little bit. Um, on your journey. And so let's kind of begin there. Where did your like love for home theater, where did that kind of begin and how did you get into home theater? Yeah, it's a good question. So I, I think it started in college, you know, sort of in, in, in my apartment, my yeah. buddies were starting to get into it. They, you know, got a receiver and got some speakers and it sounded really impressive. Mm -hmm. So I was introduced to the world of credit cards and uh, <laughs> sort yeah, of, yeah. you know, so my, my first major debt in, in, in life was as a result of, you know, buying a home theater set up sure. for my fraternity house gotcha. in the room I was in, in the fraternity house. And so I got so excited and basically every time, you know, every sort of next step in my life as I moved into sort of a new place into an apartment after mm -hmm. college and then sort of into my first home, everything was structured around how am I going to make this living room sort of, you know, a, a theater experience when sure. I wanted it to be, uh, with, with the aspiration of always having a space that was going to be dedicated. I never had that mm -hmm. until until we uh, we moved into this home. Yeah, and so that was how many years ago? So we bought the home in 2016 and uh, started construction sort of in this area in 2017. Gotcha. So roughly about five years ago. So if we were to back up maybe five years ago, before you started building out this home theater, we all learn from, you know, when we get into this process, what are some things that you've learned and maybe what are some things that you would do differently in the same space with your home theater um, now that you've had some experience building that out yeah. here? Yeah, well, I knew absolutely nothing when I started this process. And I knew, you know, I'd seen sort of pictures and videos of others, you know, sort of with impressive sets. I, I really wanted something nice, but sure. I knew, practically speaking, I wasn't going to be able to invest the kind of money it was going to require to do that. Mm -hmm. so, so practically speaking, I had to think about what could I do myself. Sure. And so I started researching different avenues to pursue to sort of, you know, build things myself and you know, use resources on the AVS Forum was a fantastic resource. Yeah. Uh, when we moved into the home, this was a living room mm. area and, a, and an office area that the prior family had used. So okay. we ripped all of that out. And I basically just had a blank slate. Yeah. Now, had I had it to do over again, I would have been thinking at that time about, you know, sound bleed mm. and, you know, low frequency noise <laughs> making it <laughs> up. Traveling through the house. Appreciated that uh, upstairs is our master bedroom. It's gotcha. so literally above us right now oh, is, wow. is my master bedroom and our, and our bed. So uh, it's not uncommon for my wife to, you know, text me in the evenings and say, uh, what is going on? I get there? the same text from Jessica. <laughs> so I, I totally get that. So if you could go back, maybe adding some sound yeah, isolation. Yeah, you know, I honestly, I, I was terrified at the concept of ripping drywall out. But in the process of this, I managed to figure out how to fix drywall. So, okay. so knowing what I know now, I probably would have taken the drywall on. I would okay. have done some channel isolation stuff and all the green glue mess. And mm -hmm. I, would have, I, I probably would have done all of that. Gotcha. Now, s subsequent to the build, when my wife put me on notice that this was an issue that you need, needed to work on, <laughs> Uh, I did have some insulation sprayed in, so the the blue jean material, shredded okay. up blue jeans, is all in the 18 inch crawl space, or not crawl space, but 18 inch space between sure. the floor joists of the first floor and the in the basement. So that did help a little bit, okay. but um, it's uh, it's still a problem. Yeah, the reality, anytime you get massive subwoofers and you're producing SPL down here, it's going to travel, but doing some things for isolation can definitely kind of minimize that. Are there any other changes that you would make, kind of looking back? Uh, you know, honestly, no major changes. That's good. Honestly, I, we've really enjoyed the experience getting here. I mean, it's been incremental. Yeah. So we, we sort of took baby steps, but uh, it's, been a, it's been a really fun process. But no major, outside of trying to contain mm -hmm. some of the sound, we've been really happy with, that, with, the, yeah. with the results. And I love that you mentioned that this has been a process. A lot of guys watching the videos, you may look at, at your home theater and go, man, you know, I can't do that all at once. Well, the reality is you don't have to do it all at once. 
build it out over time, start off with a really small system and just incrementally kind of upgrade over time and, and just do what you can. Don't worry about going down the route of, of financing an entire home theater because I think we had that conversation. You, well, we'll talk, let's talk about that. That's a good transition. So when you think about building a home theater, it can get expensive, like really, really, really quick, especially if you're contracting this out. You know, you're hiring a company to come in and just put it all together, and that can get super, super expensive. I think you, you kind yeah, of looked into that. Yeah, I actually had a contractor come in because I, I didn't know what I was doing. I told you, sure. I had no idea. Yeah. So they came in and, and, you know, measured everything. We talked about sort of what I wanted. They were trying to talk me out of a projector. Oh, you don't need oh, a projector. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And then and they got the quote back, and it was, you know, it was five figures, yeah. you know, in the high five figures. Sure. And, uh, and I, I, I was like, well, my, my, my dream is never going to come to life. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no way I could pursue sure. that. that was, we had just moved in the house. We were doing renovations elsewhere in the house. Yeah. I wanted to put a pool in for the kids. And it was a non-starter. So I thought, if I'm going to do this, like, if I'm going to realize what I, the whole reason I wanted to buy this house was for this space, right. I was really was going to realize that I have to do it myself. Awesome. So you did a lot of the things that, what are some of the, I know we alluded to some of them, but what are some of those steps that you took to help keep the cost down in your room? Yeah, so I mean the riser, you know, I built using you know guidance from the ABS forum, which was fantastic. Sure. It's really step by step process. All the electrical work I ended up doing myself. All the wiring, all the you know running conduit and mm -hmm. and, and pulling wires all myself. All the drywall work. So, you know, if you saw this was this is in process, we had holes everywhere, right. everywhere in the ceiling as sure. I'm you know pulling cable and pulling conduit through and. Yeah. Um, so I would learn how to do drywall repair. It actually turned out pretty good. Put nice. in can lights myself. Um, did the low voltage wiring for the lighting on the on the on the riser. Um, obviously, we did all our painting. Did the construction for the the front stage facade that yeah. are hiding the left and right channels. Sure. Um, you know, built the the stand the center channels on. So, so that was custom yourself too. Yeah. Just so again, saving some money there. Yeah. So the, really, the only thing I brought a contractor in for this was put the carpet in. Yeah. A yeah. lot of guys do that because carpets. Yeah. That's a, that's a specialty in and of itself to make that look nice and tidy. Yeah. yeah. So I can definitely see that. So let's talk about upgrades. Um, I know uh, a lot of us, we start on a journey and kind of the more we get into it, the more we see that, man, I'd like to have this or have that. It, are there some things in your home theater that you've thought about upgrading, maybe in the near future? or the Yeah, well, I blame you and, and like my buddy Jay. You know, you guys uh, are constantly feeding ideas, which is sort of challenging. And that's why I stay up at night thinking about this kind of thing, which yeah. I shouldn't be. I should just be enjoying this. But yeah, yeah there's a couple things that I want to do. Obviously, we talked about the challenges with the, the French doors and that's the right. light bleed. Like, some things I want to do there. I think that's going to be a That'd relatively be easy. low oh, cost yeah. thing. Oh, we're talking 20, 30 bucks yeah. for, to buy and that. And that's the kind of upgrade my wife wants to hear about. Yeah. But these other things are Tell her that be... was my idea. <laughs> but when it comes to these other expensive ones, that was Jay's idea. Okay. Well, <laughs> she already Jay's already on the list, trust me. Um, I'm, I really want to do an acoustically transparent screen. I want to yeah. go bigger. Um, I sort of watching your videos and, and uh, sort of seeing that experience that your theater provides you sort of being a little bit closer with a bigger screen, being more immersive. Yeah. I want that. I want I that think a lot. it's going to be cool. Yeah. So definitely, which I think is going to require some probably a change in projector as well. So yeah. we've got some work to do up there. And then because it's a mixed use space mm -hmm. and I've got sort of the pool area and the kitchen area, kitchenette area sure. and the light situations there, I think what I'd like to do when we're definitely doing, you know, sort of dedicated movie theater watching stuff, I want to, I'd like to have some, some light, some drape. Yeah. Like some and curtains I, that you could pull some across. Curtains, yeah. And maybe even, this, we, I've seen some motorized stuff yeah. you can do relatively inexpensively. So I think long term, I'll probably do something like that too. Well, Randy, I'm serious, man. This has been an absolute pleasure. I love seeing the different design aspects, the different choices that people make when they build a home theater because I really want to provide inspiration for you guys that are watching the video. Maybe you have a space, something similar to this. Maybe you've seen certain areas that you've implemented into your home theater that you could implement in yours. Maybe some areas to save some money by doing some DIY acoustic treatment or building your own speaker stand <laughs> and so hopefully this just provides some great inspiration and if you like these types of videos make sure you're subscribed because we've got a bunch of videos coming just like this i'm in the middle of a florida home theater tour there's probably 15 to 20 different home theaters that i'll be featuring here on the channel over the next couple months and if you've got an awesome home theater and you'd like to submit it for the possibility of doing something like this definitely head over to hometheatertours.com, submit that, whether it's here in Florida or even out of state, 
And as always, you guys be blessed and we'll catch you in the next video.